I'm not doing an awful lot of talking here. If anybody has a question, please let me know. Sometimes it's kind of hard for me to coordinate my right and left brain at the same time. Um, once you have the fabrics stacked in a way that you like, um, I basted these down. I think you can see uh, the red basting stitches here. There, if I turn it like that. Um, I'll take those out later. And I'm going to use a back stitch to get this heart in its place. Um, let's see. I like the blanket stitch a lot for going around, especially these raw edges. All right, here we go. If you were thinking that it sounds kind of like Joe Biden and Joe Rogan, well, those two voices are actually Donald Trump pushing the vaccine and Dr. Oh, Fauci saying, somebody has their finished, probably me. I'll get to Fauci in a second, yeah. but first, here's Trump. If you're listening to the news or whatever that is, there you go. Depending on how many layers you add to your pin and how um, thick you want to go with your embroidery, uh, this can be a uh, an hour or so project, or it can be an all afternoon project. And whatever you want to do is fine. I think this pin, there's that blue pin. This, this pin that I did with um, all these little tiny stitches, that took me quite a while. I was going to try to get the camera a little closer, but I don't have a button to do that. So Robinson, are you um, stitching two pieces of felt around together or you're actually not doing felt? Yours is totally fabric. The, no, so this one using... has felt on the back. Oh, okay, all right. And it has the blue, the white, the lace, this dark blue and the red fabric stacked on top of each other. Um, on top of this. This one only has the red heart 
and the little peachy rectangle behind it, and then a piece of, I wonder if you can see there, it's kind of a canvas weave cloth in the background. And then on the back, there's felt. And it just depends how much time you have, how many little snippets of fabric you've got. So Robinson, someone is asking, uh, let's see, Lee, Lee Anna is asking uh, if every, if you ever use a glue stick to hold the fabric places in place instead of basting stitches. I don't, but I've heard people use that technique um, with all kinds of success. Isn't there a kind of glue stick that's made or or some kind of glue that's actually made for sewing? It's a Fabri-Tac, right? Well, that's if you don't, oh, actually, no, I've heard, you're right. I've heard people use Fabri-Tac, it's that silicon glue, um, and it has three names. I have a bottle that says three in one. I've seen Fabri-Tac and Fabri-Fix. And I think it's which country they sell it to or something like that. But I think the recipe for the glue is the same. Um, anyway, I've heard of people using that and putting fabric and paper sandwiches together through a, a sewing machine. Um, I don't know, it seems sticky to me like, no matter what kind of glue you get, it would get on the needle. So I've never used it. Um, maybe you um, could unmute Leanne and ask her if she's done that, if that's true, that the needle. Uh, gets so Patty Browse, uh, Douse is showing us a fabric tacky pack. I'm gonna unmute. Yeah, then we can all see her. Patty, if you yep. unmute, yeah, yep. go ahead and hold it up and sh and talk. Okay. It's a, it was a pack of three or four different kinds of fabric glue, and I just got it at uh, Joanne's a million years ago. I'm sure they still have it, but it, it, there's all different kinds depending on what it is you're trying to do. The other thing I've done a lot of is mm -hmm. um, double face tape, but you wouldn't want to sew through that because that will stick on your needles. But if you, you could use a little dot of it to hold things in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good tip. Oh, I've also heard of people using, um, when, when women used to do pin curls, I'm sure people still do it. And there's a thin pink tape that you would make a, a pin curl in your hair and then tape it to your head and sleep overnight with it. You'd have great curls in the morning something like that. And I've heard people use that or washi tape might work the same way. It's kind of a low tack uh, tape. And I have, uh, this is fab, actual fabric tack by Beacon. Um, and this is a permanent uh, way to fix a fix uh, fabric to um, pretty much anything. It, you can affix fabric to paper or fabric to fabric or whatever, but it does, it's hard to sew through. So that's an option too. It's a great question because it is an option and one I don't often use because I don't mind basting, but um, but I know a lot of people do. Well, it's fun to hear, you know, what, how everybody, you know, different people to use different things to, you know, tips and tricks that they've found or figured out over the years too, so.
So in getting ready for this class, I have made <laughs> a lot of pins. And um, now I'm gonna have to find a holiday where I can give them all to friends. Ooh, Amy, I just had a thought. I wonder, I don't even know if this is possible. Would it be possible to sell the pins at the library for the library fund? Uh, yes. Can yes, you guys do it. that? Can you I, sell non-book items? Yes, we can. Cool. That would be a cool yeah. fundraiser. I would be very happy to do that. I love it. I'll, I'll put together a stack um, and bring them down and we'll put it on the, I don't know, your Facebook, your Instagram. Oh yeah, I, I would share it out and uh, we okay. could do maybe a little fundraiser, uh, you know, thing on, on Facebook uh, through Julia so that people could, um, you know, purchase them. They want it. Oh, right. If you're not in town, if right. you're far away. Yep. Okay. All right. So I finished with the blue and I'm tying off on the back of the felt, that little blue tie off there. And um, I don't put the actual backing on the um, pin until after I've completely decorated the front, I've sewn on beads and all the messy stitching is on the back. And then I put another piece of cloth over the back um, like that, which you can see the stitch I did with the beads that goes all the way around. And you can see the stitching for the pin, but you can't see all these messy tie-offs. And in this one, I did a uh, blanket stitch around the edge. So you can see that and the stitches for the pin. But none of the other messy stuff shows. That was a great tip. I just lost my pin. Uh, YouTube is a great resource for more embroidery stitches than you can shake a stick at. And every once in a while, I have my favorites, which of course I always remember. Every once in a while, I'll get bored with what I know, or I'll remember a stitch, but I won't remember how to do it exactly. And you can look up, it's been my experience, you can look up absolutely everything on YouTube. They haven't come up with a stitch yet that I haven't been able to find.
Okay, so here's another little thought process. Here's my needle. Um, I want to stitch down this piece of white fabric. And when I was stitching down the blue heart, I went around the edge. And in stitching down the white, I was thinking what stitch could I use around the edge? And I looked at this um, pin and you'll see that I did rows and rows of back stitch and I just went over the star. So I didn't actually sew the edges of the star down. They just all got caught in the rows of backstitch. So to, to put into your design um, idea book, that's another thing you can do is uh, just load up with stitches rather than edge the piece. Well, I guess I also want to say the style that I've used with these pins that I've made is a, um, there are a lot of raw edges and it's kind of a messy style. It would be, of course, if you like things to be a whole lot neater around the edges, it would be completely fine to do a blind stitch applique takes a little longer, but it comes out. I actually love that, that method of applique, but it does take a little longer. And So Robinson, um, Patty asked about um, having anyone maybe kind of hold up what they're currently working on to kind of maybe see anybody who would like to. Um, so I am in, I stitched around two pieces of felt and now I am going to chain stitch my heart on. So there's mine. That is. Very sweet. Oh, love Claudia's. Who shares? Claudia, say something. I'm not seeing everybody. She's on mute. If you unpin yourself. Okay. Um, the, um, this is a little heart pin. Um, my grandniece just got a little dog. So we have a little border cut piece of border poly fabric on a white felt heart. I love that. Anybody else? If you talk, you'll come up on the big screen and everybody can see you. I'm using, um, I have the, the, the heart on red felt and I have some sheep's wool that has a kink to the wool that I'm kind of still beginning to, to tack on to. 
Thank you. Oh, that's really. Yes, the textures you can get on these pins are really fun to explore. Carrie, if you go ahead, hold yours yeah. up and talk. Yeah, um, this is a piece of lead that I had um, that I put in behind the heart and I, one heart wasn't showing up, so I put another one behind it. Oh, that lace is gorgeous. Yeah, I have, I have a whole string of it. Um, not, that's not it. This is it here. Oh, it's really beautiful. Um,
Amy, I need to walk into my studio for a sec. I will be right back. I um, forgot to bring these with me. Uh, I found these, I think this or something like it on Pinterest. And I'm hoping you can see that the way these circles were sewn around the edge makes the fabric kind of curl up around the edges. So it's like making these little bowls or cups out of fabric. So I thought as an extra treat for attending this class, I um, wrote out the instructions for how to do this. And Amy will send this to you after our class is finished when she gets her computer back. I did two of them and I put pins on the back of these, um, but you could actually make one of these little flowers and put it on a pin. So it becomes a part of the, uh, the pin rather than a pin in its own sake. You can do anything you want. they were so cool when I saw them on Pinterest. I thought, how do you do that? How do you make the fabric curl up like that? I played around for a while and I figured it out. I have something funny to show you that I thought of when I saw what Robinson was doing there. I got this some years ago. It was made by a Native American woman and she came to me to ask um, for some help in marketing it. It's made out of leather. And those are all little beads around the edge and it is a functional item. Are you ready? It's for the woman who always wants to be prepared. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. How nice. That's wonderful. Um, so we have a nice comment uh, from someone. Uh, how nice uh, that we are all sitting around quietly stitching together. Just wonderful. 
pieces are beautiful little art quilts each and every one of them thank you so much you're very welcome it is kind of you know in back in the day we could have all gathered together at the library and sat around or a quilting a quilting bee or or just uh you know a knitting a knitting circle or whatever so how nice that we can still do it even though we are all in different spaces and thank you for all joining us this is wonderful yeah Good reason to stitch. Yes, I think I'm of the mind that pretty much anything is a good reason to stitch. <laughs> yeah, you have done a couple slow stitching. I like that one where you were slow, st the, the video that you did uh, slow stitching the um, uh, the lace way back. That That was probably last year. You slow stitched lace on just straight across on, and you were just talking away. So for anyone uh, who doesn't know, I'm going to give uh, Robinson a, a very well-deserved plug. Uh, so if you are on uh, YouTube or Instagram, you can find her videos, her instructional craft videos and chatting and just her wonderful sharing. Um, of her creative spirit at Wild Sun. And I will go ahead and put that right in the chat. Um, and I will uh, put a link when I send the attachment of the uh, button flowers um, so that everyone will have the direct link to her um, YouTube channel as well as her Instagram. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. And I hope you all know, Amy also has a channel on YouTube, which is mostly kids craft, but I find them a lot of fun to play with. Thank you. And there are uh, definitely some paper uh, creations for anyone, some of you know. Uh, so I also do have an art and journaling group that meets Wednesdays at four. It is for anyone. It is not just journaling. We do a lot of paper uh, creations. Today we did a peaked, um, a peaked card fold with uh, little tucks. And we've made books, we've made journals, we have written, we've watercolored, we've created book tags and ephemera for journals and, um, and written poetry and all sorts of things. So, um, and that is an open, <coughs> excuse me, 
an open free workshop. <coughs> Excuse me. Nice tickle. I've been talking too lot too much. Um, but anyways, so you can uh, just email me at alhand at libraryofcamden.org and uh, I will get you the link and add you to that loop. Mm. Claudia mentioned that slow stitch was a new uh, a new term to her. Um, it I did a little research. It came out of the of all things the slow food movement in the late nineteen nineties. Um, I think it was a reaction to fast food uh, emporiums. And um, yeah, I think a lot of books were written and a lot of uh, videos were made um, about taking one's time, enjoying the making of food and the um, consuming of food with friends. And so it was sort of a big deal. I had babies I don't, at that point, and I don't really remember it. But um, then somebody came up with slow stitching as, a, as another thing in the world that could be taken more slowly. And the thing I love about slow stitching is that you can do perfect stitches, but you don't have to you can just make lots of things and sew raw edges and um, yeah. We can be imperfect. Is anybody using any um, like fun, funky stitch? Any anything different? I mean, I'm just using a chain stitch right now, so. And. Linda, I just realized it was you. Hello. <laughs> it's nice to have you on. Oh, you're on mute. It's nice to be here. This was sounded like such a fun thing to do. Good. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. Certainly am. Yeah. Uh, is everybody here from Maine? If you're not from Maine, uh, put something in the chat so I know you're not from Maine. Because we love having folks from other places. Uh, in our art journaling group, uh, we have uh, people from uh, Virginia. And I know that Cher is uh, in uh, Roanoke right now. Um, and we have uh, someone from Pennsylvania and uh, such. Ooh, New York. Okay. Ooh, moving to Camden. Yay. That's well, your first stop will be the library, I'm sure. <laughs> 
So just a little bit of extra information here. I have sewn down the blue heart, the white rectangle, the lace, and the blue little piece of batik behind. And I'm getting ready to sew the edges. I think I'm probably pretty much done. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, trim the, the felt off. And then I've got to go find a piece of fabric that can be the back of the pin. I'm actually reshaping the red a little bit here. I also made this past week a little yo-yo and made that into a pin. Here's the one with the little Cupid charm. So Robinson Lee was just uh, telling uh, me that uh, she led an art group uh, for over 20 years, a craft uh, club that at the college where she taught for over 20 years. Wow. Yeah, I know. What I'm kind sure of she's... stuff did they do? Um, I'm not sure. Um, Maybe Hi, I can I can unmute. Uh, we did everything. We did painting, uh, quilting, uh, crayon embroidery, which is a lot of fun. I could show you how to do that. It's Ooh. super fun. Um, and yeah, we had Albany Med. 
Albany College of Pharmacy, Albany Law students from all the different colleges join in. Wow, so wow that sounds so fun. I bet you'd really enjoy our um, art journaling group too. I've never done that. So yeah, I'd be interested. Yeah. Yeah. Just email me and um, I will, I will also put a, well, you'll get an email from me tonight <laughs> at the end of this or tomorrow morning anyway. So thank you. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. And to know that I'm doing it at the same time uh, as all these other wonderful women is just like, go girls, you know? We need to all come together as a community more often. Yes. Going back to our roots. My grandmother and great-grandmother would be very proud and very happy that I am doing this. As I sit in my great grandmother's house. Yeah. Stitching with probably some of the fabrics that were hers. I know some of the needles were. One of my grandmothers was a milliner. I think that's Ooh. how you say it. Yeah, yeah. And Hat maker. Cool. Yeah. In New York City. Um, at the turn of the, the 20th century. And um, she met her husband, my grandfather, uh, while she was traveling to Europe on a buying trip to Paris to buy ribbons and things wow. people need to make hats. Isn't that a wow. cool story? <laughs> and wh what year was that? Well, she got married in 1907. So, so it would have been in the 20s. No, she, no, this was before she got married. So it would have been like oh. 1905 or something. Oh, wow. Isn't that wild? That is. Well, because the, um, the French influence, tons and tons of artists, architects, painters, like everything went to France and Europe and, you know, then brought back gardeners and landscape artists and everything brought back yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, from from there and and you can see a lot of the influences in our styling in the United States around that time from things that people brought back and um uh David McCullough wrote, wrote a book uh which I cannot think of the name of the book uh something American uh, but that's what it's all about. Uh, it's about like all these um, all these artists and famous people who went to Paris and went to France and Europe and 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 then brought all of those influences back. It was really good. I can't I can't think of the name of the book, but it's a David McCullough book. Wow. Oh. And he writes history books. And it's actually an adult book, not a kid's book. I have all kinds of leftover silly stuff from um, back when I had a handbag company. And it's, it makes me feel sad because I don't have any use for any of it. So I've, I've put a bunch of it on here. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. Wow. yeah. The fabric is, is hand woven. A friend of mine who's a weaver, I get her pieces and I make them into things. But these were too little to use for anything else. So. Gorgeous. 
Yeah, yeah that's Susan. What that's what Susan, you're on mute. If you unmute, then we can hear you and see you. I was just complimenting um, the person that was just showing me the showing us the pieces that she had incorporated into that and the history of those pieces. So interesting. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they are actually there's there's some um, those are garnet little garnet beads and um, agates and so forth. Uh, so lovely. Robinson, I love the array of pins that you have out right now. Yeah. I'm drooling a bit. Well, you'll be able to see them up close and personal. You and Julia and I can have a conversation about how to do this. Yeah. So we have about 20 minutes left. Um, does anybody have any questions? Have you gotten figured out everything you wanted to do? I think the only thing I haven't really showed you is uh, putting the pin on the back and I, uh, while I was making pins a week or so ago, I realized that I didn't have, all I had were great big pins, um, like about this big. And that's too big for some of these. Um, so I wanted to get some little ones and I got this on Amazon. You can look up gold safety pins and it's a wonderful box full of little teeny tinies and great big huge ones and medium sized and one that will be just right for you. So uh, when I put these on, again, there are two ways to put a pin on, you can do it like this and just while you're sewing the edges, sew a pin on um, not the side that opens. Uh, so <laughs> and the other way to do it is so that it's kind of hidden behind the pin. Um, and I just use kind of a cross stitch or a herringbone across the back. I'm sure you could put a little piece of cloth there and sew under the edges and it would be a little more exquisite, but. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that I had all of the ideas I could, that I made here um, out in front of you. This is an old piece of, um, oops, uh, an old puzzle piece. And I just took a gold pen and covered over the, whatever the pattern was. This isn't really a pin, but um, I just wanted to show it to you because there's so much stuff on it. 
Uh, <laughs> there's a little scroll of silver and gold tin foil, uh, a snap, a couple of snaps, um, coiled wire buttons, these little word beads, um, little pretend gears, some fluffy threads. This is a jeweled button I got at a big box store. Oh, and I wanted to show you this too. Um, we talked about uh, our intentions at the beginning. And one of the ideas that I wrote about in that little pack of papers was getting a button and getting some sort of a permanent ink pen and writing a word or a couple of words on a big plastic button or a piece of shell or a little piece of stone and sewing that on. Yeah, I want to um, share this. So the pin backing that I used uh, is a little bit different shape. So it's one that you could hot glue onto something, but it also has uh, little teeny holes in it so that you can sew it. So it um, it's made for um, like a backing. Um, so that is another option and they have those in different sizes as well. Um, and I probably got them at Walmart or online or something. I've had them for a long time um, and I don't have one handy that's not attached, um, but I, I will show this. Uh, so this was a little felted owl that I did. Uh, so I just cut out, you know, kind of a, a crazy owly shape. I actually stitched it on a sewing machine around and then uh, stitched the, the belly on. And then I embroidered his beak and uh, the little uh, buttons on it uh, to create that little coat pin. And I've been wearing this for quite a few years. And um, I was gonna do more today, but then when you said the hearts, uh, so this is how mine is coming uh, with my chain stitch going around with a piece of fabric crumb heart. So, and it hides most of the backing because of the way the chain stitch is going, so. Any more show and tell? Well, I didn't start stitching mine because when we drive up to Maine, I like to sew in the car. So I tried the gluing to see. So I did, I don't know if you can see this, I did a heart one. Then I thought it would be kind of neat to- uh, So Leanne, oops, sorry. Your video isn't on, so- Oh, you... that, that would, okay, here we go. That, there okay. you go. All right, so I did a heart one, and as I said, I have it up higher. Stitching. There you go, perfect. Okay, so Beautiful. I haven't done the stitching, but I'll do that in the car, and I have all these novelty buttons. And then I thought it'd be really neat to have one for like October, November, December, you know, a different one. So I did a Christmas tree for December. That's great. And then I did a little lamb for March. <gasps> and I just kind of felt, you know, I don't know what that's called, but when you, you use a, a needle to felt oh, needle on there. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, this is mine. <gasps> oh, that's adorable. Perfect. Going to have kind of that tacky pink. It's going to be kind of wobbly, but that's all right. And I'm looking for, through my stuff for a charm to put in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get too far, but I had a bunch of upholstery fabric that had 
different designs on it. I cut out a teapot and put it on a heart. And I think I'm gonna do some stitching around it and then put another layer around it. Mine's bigger and I'm not sure it's even gonna be a pin, but I like the idea of adding some kind of an intention. Yeah, thank you. I might even make the heart a pocket, you know, so that the intention sticks into the middle of the pen. Yep, that's great. That would be really pretty if you were, um, you know, making a little, um, you could put it on the front of a journal. You could do a fabric journal cover or something like that, or, um, or even, you know, attach it to a purse. Yeah or a pocket or, or like a decoration on like a little thing that goes in your purse or, you know, it's, yeah. it's because of the size of the teapot. So, so I spent the whole time remembering how to do blanket stitch, but I got, I, I made progress. Great. I was thinking the same thing. It took me like five or six stitches to remember how to do a chain stitch the right way before. And I should have started on something else. And then I was like, oh, heck, whatever. I So I messed up a little bit at the beginning. <laughs> That's okay. It's I can hide it with a button. I'd like to show you my one little heart that's coming along. Um, I've mm. added, uh, I only, I had I lost an earring actually. It was belonged to my mother-in-law. It has a little jade piece in it. It's a stud and a little diamond chip in it. And so I've kind of incorporated that into the center of it too. So it's kind of fun to have this memento. So Absolutely. Yeah. That's a Especially great way to use single earrings that you've lost. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Love it. I'm sure we all have some. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Chris, did you want to share? I think Patty had her hand up, though. No, no, no. No. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was stuck on my intention. I tried to make an apple. I don't know if you can see it but I ended up making a, cra a, uh, a crab apple. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, got, it's got a piece of uh, necklace, um, like a, spot hold, a thing for a stone to hold a stone in. So I just stuffed the apple in there. Sorry about my bird. And then tried to put some apple blossoms on it. And so it hangs from the necklace thing. Very nice. It was fun to be with you all. I remember when I was uh, making masks back in 2020, there was a <laughs> nationwide network of people making masks. And I was once on a, on a phone call with like hundreds of people from across the country, everybody sitting at their sewing machine, making masks on Zoom at the same time. Oh, how nice. How neat. Yeah, I made over a thousand masks. hate to admit it, but I'm still making some. There's still a few people who I you know I make ones that have the coffee filters inside. And so they're, you know, they're much more efficient than a single layer thing. So um, I'm, people are still wanting them. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> yeah. But I don't make thousands. <laughs> Chris is seriously into production when she sews. Patty, I'm enjoying your ears. <laughs> I, I thought it'd be fun to dress up tonight. Well, we're so glad you did. <laughs> These are were made by um, one of the exhibitors at the Common Ground Fair, one of the um, kids in the children's area, the um, um, Youth Enterprise Zone. Fun. I don't, I don't, I have pig ears and I have bunny ears. Uh, but no cat ears. I like the cat ears. Yeah. And I have all kinds of bealy boppers for different holidays. So things that bounce, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. I want to and see some, some more things people made. Oh, let me see yours. Um, okay. So I got a little bit further along. 
Oh, and I nice. added some beads and a button. Um, I don't know how well you can see it. I added the beads along the top edge of the uh, heart. And then I have a little tiny heart but, uh, bead that I put in the middle. So I, I have to stop though. I get carried away. I did, I've done um, crazy quilting with embellishments and I never know when to really call it quits. <laughs> so. <laughs> and I have stopped making masks. I was making, every time I met somebody that didn't have one or said complimented mine, I'm like, I had a little bag with me all the time. And I said, yeah. you want some, you can have them. And yeah. I was making the ones that tie around the back of your head because I wear hearing aids. So um, it worked much better. And there were a lot of people that liked those better, but I've, moved on to some uh n95s now so yeah that's great well uh for those of you who um quilt and and do uh, any kind of art i mean you're all artsy and you're here um this would also so we have an artist trading card swap at the library and uh so they're two and a half by three and a half inch size uh, let's see, let me see one. Ooh, here is one that Robinson sewed. Stitched, here's a slow stitched one. Uh, oh. So here's one that she did, and this was an ATC trading card. So on the back, she has it glued, the whole thing is glued on to a piece of cardstock. And then there's information about who did it, when she did, you know, what year and where it was. And the cool thing is, is that each piece is unique uh, and um, original, and we have them available for trade. So if you bring some that are done, then you can take some that are, you know, the same number or whatever that are that are there. And we have ones done from all over the country and from little kids to big kids to teens to adults and retirees. So there is just an incredible amount of watercolors and hand stitched and, and yeah, so really, really fun, fun things. So that's something that anybody can participate mm. in. And if you want to, you can always send them to me and I will stick them in there. And so where do you get the card on the back? Uh, so, uh, so she just, she made it on, um, on her printer, but, oh, okay. um, but you can just write it. Um, I mean, I have some that are, you know, I mean, some that people printed on computers. Uh, this is one from um, Pennsylvania. Uh, I had some people from, um, you know, just passing through the library. Uh, and this was uh, Robinson's idea. So that's why we have ATC trading cards too. Um, but we had people over the summer who were just passing through and took a few because they were inspired to do it. And then randomly, like a month later, I got an envelope from somebody in Nevada and someone in you know California um, who had sent you know a number of cards that they had designed because they had taken two or three. So it was really fun oh, and it's still fun. ongoing. What yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is really fun. And it's a great small way to just share your artwork and to kind of collect other people's artwork too. So, and anybody can participate. So we are near it. We have like three minutes to go. Oh my gosh. Uh -oh. Where has time gone? So I want to thank everyone very much for being here and thank you for participating. Thank you for slow stitching with us and thank you to Robinson so much. Hopefully some of you will check out uh, our art journaling class uh, at the library. Uh, you can find it on our website. Um, and, uh, and also we'll check out Robinson's, um, uh, YouTube channel, Wild Sun, 
And then uh, also my YouTube channel, which is Miss Amy Hand. Uh, and we both also have Instagram accounts. So you can, uh, you can find us both those ways as well. Um, and I am going to send an email with the uh, button flowers uh, handout from Robinson. And um, that's what I have to say. Robinson, do you have any final words? Well, just thank you all for your company um, tonight. I, I very much have that sense of this is a, a new millennium kind of sewing circle. Um, so I was delighted to spend an hour and a half with you all. And I uh, hope you had fun with this. If you ever have any questions, you can always find me either on the my Instagram account or, um, and if I know it's you, we can maybe figure out emails or the YouTube. Actually, if you go to my YouTube channel to the about page, my, my uh, email is right there if you have any questions and want some help figuring something out. Plus, I think you can leave direct messages uh, for people too. Yes. And you certainly can on Instagram. So I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful 22 and hope this gives you a great jump start into your artistic life in this year. Amy, thank you so much for all of this. You're welcome. And I will say, uh, so we do have some other Jumpstart January workshops that are coming up and I am teaching one at the end of the month. It is on uh, cardboard, uh, card cardboard portraits or cardboard creations. Um, so, and I don't have a picture of it uh, because <laughs> I'm not at the library and my, my creation is at the library, but it is on the uh, link. If you look on the library's link uh, for the cardboard uh, portraits, there is a photo of the one that I did, and I literally did it in like an hour and a half uh, while standing at the desk um, with just a bunch of random cardboard um, while I was helping people. <laughs> people were wondering what I was doing as I was slashing the heck out of a piece of cardboard with a, an X-Acto knife as they were coming in the door. Um, yeah, so um, anyways, Thank you all so much uh, and happy January and happy 22. And maybe we'll see you on one of our other, um, other workshops or in the library. Thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Robinson, go ahead and stay on. Okay. <laughs>